when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will come to life, just as the Father is himself the source of life. In the same way, he has made his Son to be the source of life. And he has given the Son the right to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be surprised at this. The time is coming when all the dead will hear his voice and come out of their graves. Those who have done good will rise and live. And those who have done evil will rise and be condemned. I can do nothing on my own authority. I judge only as God tells me, so my judgment is right. Because I am not trying to do what I want, but only what he who sent me wants. If I testify on my own behalf, what I say is not to be accepted as real proof. But there is someone else who testifies on my behalf. And I know that what he says about me is true. John is the one to whom you sent your messengers. And he spoke on behalf of the truth. It is not that I must have a human witness. I say this only in order that you may be saved. John was like a lamp, burning and shining. And you were willing for a while to enjoy his light. But I have a witness on my behalf, which is even greater than the witness that John gave. What I do, that is the deeds my father gave me to do. These speak on my behalf and show that the father has sent me. And the father who sent me also testifies on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his face. And you do not keep his message in your hearts, for you do not believe in the one whom he sent. You study the scriptures because you think that in them you will find eternal life. And these very scriptures speak about me. Yet you are not willing to come to me in order to have life. I am not looking for human praise. But I know what kind of people you are. And I know that you have no love for God in your hearts. I have come with my father's authority. But you have not received me. When, however, someone comes with his own authority, you will receive him. You like to receive praise from one another. But you do not try to win praise from the one who alone is God. How then can you believe me? Do not think, however, that I am the one who will accuse you to my father. Moses, in whom you have put your hope, is the very one who will accuse you. If you had really believed Moses, you would have believed me. Because he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how can you believe what I say? After this, Jesus went across Lake Galilee, or Lake Tiberius, as it is also called. A large crowd followed him because they had seen his miracles of healing the sick. went up a hill and sat down with his disciples. The time for the Passover festival was near. Jesus looked around and saw that a large crowd was coming to him. enough food to feed all these people. He said this to test Philip. Actually, he already knew what he would do. For everyone to have even a little, it would take more than 200 silver coins to buy enough bread. 
Another one of his disciples, Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a boy here who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish. But they will certainly not be enough for all these people. Make the people sit down. There was a lot of grass there, so all the people sat down. There were about 5,000 men. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God. distributed to the people who were sitting there. When they were all full, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces left over. Let us not waste the bit. So they gathered them all and filled twelve baskets with the pieces left over from the five barley loaves which the people had eaten. Seeing this miracle that Jesus had performed, the people there said, Surely this is the prophet who was to come into the world. Jesus knew that they were about to come and seize him.